everyone today i will be dealing with the topic of presbyopia correction so like uh, first when we are hearing about presbyopia we will be thinking like oh, say, okay it's after an age of 40 years there will be loss of accommodation it's not like that even after like a routine cataract surgery or a presenal complicated cataracts or a pediatric cataract surgery like every in every cases there is a concept of loss of accommodation so what are the options for uh, correcting this? These are trifocals or continuous range of vision, extended depth of focus lenses, enhanced monofocals, and like laser vision correction options like presbyopia or presbyon, then presbyopic ICL. This is an advanced concept. And the, uh, some corneal based uh, procedures like corneal inlays, like cameras, raindrops, presbyopia, presbya lens, and a scleral expansion based, like scleral based procedure. So, uh, if you are considering the concept of a routine IOL procedure, the two most important things are like proper centration and astigmatism correction. So like uh, the, pro the most important thing is like a proper centration of the IOL should be there for that a proper capsule or axis should be there. And you can see that the center of the lens and the center of the cornea is coinciding with the varion. In the center of the cross only that uh, center of the corneal uh, reflex and the two Perkins images that is from the corneal center and from the IOL center is at the center. Now coming to the option of refractive lens exchange. So like wherever it's not feasible usually in a older myope like in a if you're considering the older myope take an example of a minus 4 diopter correction. From minus 4 diopter correction to a plus 3 diopter correction there is a huge way to go and there is a lot of aberrations induced. So it's like it's better to go for a refractive lens exchange in those patients. And next option is like where laser vision condition is uh, like uh, not possible cases and like ICL is not an option cases. Like a small wide to wide diameter, a small uh, anterior chamber depth and Especially in um, ICL patients, we will go for a high myope and there is more chances of retinal detachment after that. So like uh, in all these cases, a refractive lens exchange procedure is better to do. And when we are considering the co concept of pediatric cataract, like first of all, a proper anterior capsulotomy, we ha capsulorexis we have to do, then like then a primary posterior capsule or excess is everything is fine then we had we can go for an option of putting an eye oil the previously we used to go for a monofocal eye oil but the present concept is like from uh, studies like I have cited the studies there like we can go for a multifocal eye oil if you're considering the child if you're considering a child there is if through multifocality, there will be increased chance of better stereopsis power and binocularity can be achieved earlier and the amblyopia we can reduce to a much extent. The second concept of using a multifocal IOL is like uh, there is increased chance of glares and halos but the children's retina, like they have that capability of uh, accepting that sort of uh, glares and optics. So like they can go for multifocal if they are affordable. Then, uh, com then coming with the concept of enhanced monofocal, like there is an extended range of vision. When compared to a normal monofocal, there is an extended range of vision. But we can't uh, confirm and tell the patient like you will be getting a good near or near vision. Intermediate vision will be better with them. Then coming to the laser vision correction options of Presby Max. <laughs> There, this is just a standard procedure of laser correction. We are creating a flap, we are giving the laser correction and the, uh, they can go on. Next option is like press beyond is a laser blended sound where like uh, one we are using the concept of micro monovision like one eye like mainly the dominant eye we are giving it for distance correction and the non-dominant eye we are going for the near vision correction. Now this is a scleral based procedure for presbyopia correction like scleral expansion bands. These are basically PMMA bands that we are putting under the sclera near the ciliary vessels, ciliary muscle, uh, under the uh, ciliary muscles and equatorial sonules are pushed. So thereby increasing the effectiveness and like presbyopia correction but these are the, their own limitations are not practiced as routine. Another option is like corneal inlay. 
so there are so many inlays like uh, raindrop camera like everything but the thing is like with the help of femtosecond laser we are creating a flap and that flap is enough to insert that ring an upcoming option is like presbyopic icl this like a wide range of population is waiting for an ideal method of correction for presbyopia so this will be a promising one in europe they are practicing it like this presbyopic icl like uh, mainly for the myopic individuals or like those who have not started with that cataractus lens like this is an ideal option in all the concepts that uh, multifocal ioles and unifocal ioles why that great difference is there like because main thing is like glare and halos by the multifocal iol this is a comparison study thank you thank you uh, dr sri lakshmi yeah. Uh, I would, uh, Ambarish, any or any of the surgeons I here, Dr. have Manoj two is questions here. actually. Uh -huh. uh, one is, what is the ideal age you consider for refractive lens exchange? And typically, with the myopia of minus four diopter, just considering just to have a presbyopic correction, would you go for refractive lens exchange in those procedures? Yeah, the, uh, that is uh, you know a very dicey question. Because, because if yeah. you do LASIK mm -hmm. in those mm -hmm. cases also, that will increase the depth of focus anyway. Mm -hmm. So, a patient can have good post-op presbyopic vision also in that case. Yeah. So, uh, again, I think the LASIK should be customized to the patient. Exactly. I mean, maybe you cannot do what you would do for a 20-year-old. And if you're going for a refractive ex uh, lens section, that there has to be high motivation for a power like minus 4 diopters. Because uh, a very high motivation of not wearing glasses any time and, you know, any contraindication for laser. Otherwise, for minus 4 diopters, even for a patient under 45, I may not recommend. What, what is the age you consider for refractive lens exchange typically? If a uh, my cutoff is 45 actually. 45, but yeah. uh, I see my oldest patient is 56. Just, just for the clarification, yeah. my oldest patient is 56 for LASIK. Very clear lens, absolutely clear lens. Minus 4 or 5 I think he had. So I discussed this. I said in 10, maybe 15 years you would require it. Now the only question is what are they looking for? If they already exactly. worn glasses for 35 years, what is the intent of, is it to get not, I, I've become rich enough, now I can afford my LASIK or I, I am getting middle age crisis, so I don't want to wear my glasses. So these are probably the two, which you can make out during a conversation. And if you can do that, if they are okay with wearing presbyopic glasses at 60, I would still offer them LASIK. Uh, because uh, for me, that even that 0.5% chance of an RD is something that I would really be discussing with them because I've yeah, just, I, I, we did one maybe last year last week of minus 10 because she was very clear her daughter was I had done smile for her daughter she's 6'6 six, six. Mm -hmm. the lady was now 45 she wanted to see no I've been wearing glasses for 30 plus years I want to get it I want to be long, young like my daughter so ICL was not an option so we went, went ahead with clear lens extraction under, with the understanding that you'll need a retina checkup for the rest of the life but for hyperopic, the story is different. I will even offer it at 30. Then presbyopic, even laser vision yeah. correction is quite better actually. Uh, so any experience uh, who, I'm doing for lot people of who practice? Presbyopic treatment Correct. actually. So presbyopic lasers, uh, my experience has been equivocal. It would not be my right, primary choice. Hi but Hyperope, presbyope, the results are quite good, yes, very good. Very good. Uh, the only mistake we commit when we do presbyopic laser in myo is we don't do the wavefront of that one. So if you do the wavefront hmm. and if you can make out the depth of focus. Okay. So probably then you can actually customize the treatment. And most of these platforms, whichever are available, are dependent on pupil size. Okay. So, provided if you have a pupil size less than 3 mm, okay. then this hyperopic, because all these treatment, whether the blended vision or what press B max or press beyond or supra core for that matter. So, what you are creating is you are creating a central, central bump. bump. That's it. And that bump is in 3 mm zone. Hmm. So, if your pupil is less than that, you will get excellent result post-operatively. If it, that is not the case, then the results are 